he's there to see us through. This man of which I speak is here today for you and me. His name is Jesus, but you can call him as you please. They call Yeah. 
Through my disappointments, styles of discontentment, I cast my every care upon the Lord. No matter what obsession, pain or deep depression, I'm standing on that solid rock. I'm standing on the rock. Next 
next door to Jesus and tell the angels I'm coming home. It doesn't matter who lives around me, just so my man. It's me, the throne. It doesn't matter who lives around me, just so my mansion it sits near God's throne, just so. It's near God's throne. We're thankful to be in service with you tonight and praise God for you all. We're believing in all of our hearts that God is always with us. And how can I handle this end time pressure? As we live in the day that we're living in, the pandemic that we're living in, we have many people that ask me, how can I get through this time? How do we get through that is through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And the way to get through it is believing, trusting God, and just always doing what people ask you to do. If we have a surface outside, we will have it. Where if we have six feet distancing, we will have masks, etc. Everybody will be in compliance and we'll try to do our best. But I'll tell you what, we're believing that we have a God that can do all things. And how we're going to handle this problem is put it in God's hands. So the first scripture is Luke chapter 21. Now this is a period of time when the Lord is coming back for the second time. This is a time when we've been raptured and the Lord's coming back powerful. This is a time when people's hearts will fail them. How many of you think that when we're raptured out of here, if you go to mommy and daddy's house and knock on their door and mommy and daddy is gone and went away and raptured, how many hearts are going to be failing them? I should have listened to mom and dad. I should have listened to Grandma and Grandpa. I should have went to church. I should have went there for an hour and a half a week, but I didn't. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roar. How many of you know that there was an earthquake in America this morning? How many of you know that there are many earthquakes happening all over right now? How many of you realize that we're in a pandemic? And I hope you all realize that by now. How many of you realize that we have killing hornets on the West Coast? How many of you realize that God is trying his very best to say, to say, listen, I'm giving you an opportunity. I'm giving you a chance. I want you to come home with me. I want you going to heaven with your moms and your dads and your grandparents and your family. I want you to come. Will you just listen for a minute as you're sitting there? During this time, all the men's hearts are going to fail in for fear. I wonder how many hearts are failing in for fear right now. How many, are, how many of you, honestly, this is serious stuff. And this is serious business. And we don't take it lightly. We believe that this is bad. And we believe that we believe that we have a God that does watch over us as Christians. And he's our father and we're his child. And when, when, my, when one of my kids are hurting, daddy goes like a papa bear to find out what's going on with my child if they're crying. <clears throat> We've got a Lord that when we cry out, he hears us. But I wonder how many hearts right now are failing them from the many things that are going on in the world right now. I wonder how many of you have stopped to think about, well, I remember when I used to go to Sunday school, and that old teacher, 
Peter used to teach me about the end times, about the top times of Jesus coming back. I remember when they talked about the earthquakes and all the things happening to divide diverse places. Verse 26, men's hearts fell in for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now I'm going to tell you, we're going to be good. We're going to be raptured. We're in God's hands. We're coming soon. Hold on to your seats, folks. You've got to be ready. I want you going with me. I, I want to be running down those streets of gold with you. I want to be putting my feet in that clear crystal river with you. I want to be there with you. I don't want you left behind. I spent a lot of years trying just to get one by one by one. I've been trying my very best. Sometimes it's, it's not, I'm not nothing, but I try my best. Next verse is praise God. We're, we're, we're not going to keep you long. Jesus saith unto them, I am the way. Through this pandemic, Jesus has a way for us to go through the pandemic. He is the truth. You hold on to him. He won't let you go. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. There are many elders in the houses today that are very scared, and I don't blame them as, as a human being. If we're up a certain age, we shouldn't be out. I told my mom, you know, if we have church, I don't want you really out. And she said, and my mother-in-law, Lord, my, my mother-in-law, she's already working at Kohl's. She laughs at me. She's a wildcat from Kentucky. Old Donnie, mother-in-law, please listen to me. No. That's what she says. Okay, Grandma. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He is the truth in our lives. He is our life. He watches over us, takes care of us. And yes, my mother-in-law is up in a few years, and I'm concerned about it. I'm concerned about our elders. When I'm around our elders, I do try to have a mask on when they're up in their 70s and 80s, or somebody is in the hospital, or somebody is at their house. I was some people's houses today that I had a mask on to pray with them. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. From henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficient us. Verily, verily, I say unto he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall be due also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. How many of you love the Lord? How many of you are excited to love Jesus? How many of you love him? How many of you will do anything for him? How many of you will go with him? How many of you will fight for him? How many of you will tell people about Jesus? How many of you will sing his song? How many of you got tears on your prayers? My, oh, my. We've got a lot of people that are very ill in our congregation. We've got a lot of people that are very ill. Verse 13, and I hold on to this many and many a time. My dad, he was in hospice about three years. They told him he'd have maybe a few months. I prayed for my dad every day. <clears throat> but I prayed that God, I want dad to go home peacefully whenever that time comes. Mom went down. My dad had taken his last breath, his last heartbeat on Mother's Day last year. Now dad's waiting on me and all of his grandchildren and kids. But what are you going to do about it, grandchildren? Family out there that's listening? Dad's waiting on you. One thing he asked me to do is preach to you. Donnie, don't give up on him. And the church knows I don't give up on nobody. 
But I want you to see Dad and Grandpa again. Dad's at the gate. Dad will be waiting for you. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. I ask God, God, when Dad gets to that point, take him easily. Don't let him lay and lay and lay and suffer. And I thank Jesus every day. He didn't let my dad suffer. If you love me, I love Jesus so much. How about you all? How many of you get excited knowing Christ is your Savior? How many of you love coming to church? How many of you do anything to get in God's house? How many of you can't wait to get your alarm set to get back in church again? How many of you just can't wait? I don't know about you, but I can't wait till we all get back in God's house together one more time. If you love me, keep my commandments. Follow his word. Stay in his word. Enjoy the word of God. Listen to him. He's talking to you. Everything is written in there for our good. Anything you're going through is for our good. God will bring us through this pandemic. He'll bring you through it. And I pray the Father that he shall give you another comforter. My, oh my, I don't know about you all. I'm sitting out here, there's four or five. But I tell you what. I want you all to know that I'm feeling something. I'm feeling the comforter in this sanctuary right now. That he may abide with you forever. The comforter abides with us, stays with us, helps us, brings us through. And man, oh man, every time I go somewhere, and every time I go out, I say, God, let me see one person I can witness to today. God, let me be able to talk to one more person about you while I'm able to get out of the house, while I can still drive, while I can still go to hospitals, while I can still go to nursing home, while I can still go in the homes. Lord, give me the chance to talk to one more person. Even the spirit of truth in the world cannot receive. You're messing out, folks, if you don't know Jesus. There's an excitement in your whole body when you know Jesus Christ. Because it seeth him not. You don't know. You don't feel. You don't know him. But you, you know him for he dwelleth with you. And he shall be in you if you know Christ. I'm asking you from the bottom of my heart. God's told me. There's someone out there tonight that's going through a problem, that's struggling, that's fighting the devil, that's going through almost the point of turning away, and the devil has got you to the point of you're almost there, but through Christ, you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. How many families right now? I saw a lady and a man the other day as I was going down Central. They were out on the sidewalk. Cops was everywhere. They had been fighting, no doubt. They were yelling and everything else. But I want to tell you something. Through this pandemic, people's nerves are on the edge. Through this pandemic, everybody seems like they're different. But through Christ, we can make this, make it. We can get through this. We can overcome whatever the devil throws at us. We can make it. God is talking to many of you out there right now. Even the spirit of truth in the world cannot, you can't receive it. You don't know Jesus. You can't receive the spirit, the Holy Spirit, because it seeth him. You don't know him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. How many of us here, how many of us watching have been through so much during this pandemic? Many of you are on unemployment. Your jobs are gone. Many of you are struggling. Many of you need food. And I'm going to tell you now, I'm so thankful that, to belong to a church that has a vision and has people that has a love for others. We saw a load of food come into this, uh, in this church this past week for a new freezer. An added shelving for the food pantry. Now I want you all to know that on the last Tuesday of this month, the last Tuesday 
of this month from 5.30 to 7, this church over on this fellowship side will be open. You drive in and someone will come to you. We don't want anybody coming into the church with the pandemic that we're facing. How many of you right now are hungry? I'll tell you what, this church has always been the kind of church that's been a giving church. It's been a loving church. We're filling that blessing box up a lot. People are actually filling up to come and see it. They come and they don't even come to this church, but they see it and they're helping us keep it filled. I thank you all, whoever's doing that out there. Because there's probably a child that didn't have something to eat. So why someone is cancer, some of the heart condition, somebody that can't get out, somebody's afraid to get out. And I'm going to tell you, this thing is real. Many people are afraid. You're human. One thing that I've learned over my years of life is when David was fighting Goliath, it looked like a huge obstacle to David, a young man, a little guy. And here was a giant, nine feet, nine inches tall, looking at him and making fun of the Jewish people, Israel. Little old David, all the thing he had was five stones and a sling. The rest of the folks looked at David and said, David, you can't do this. My goodness, he'll just eat you up. I can see little old David, he had his faith in God. There was one little place right in the middle of the giant's eye that wasn't covered with armor. That little boy, he didn't run back. He ran toward the giant. He took that sling and there was one place that he could hit. He hit him right between the eyes and that giant hit the ground with that one stone of five that David had. David learned over years and years what, when he was a shepherd boy that he fought lions bears, many things that come against the sheep, but that boy always won because he had God on his side. And all of you out there today, we may be nervous and you may be a little afraid, but come on. You've got a Savior that's with you. you got a Savior that loves you. And I don't like being out this either, but I tell you, I believe that when God is with us, he will take care of us. Amen? When we are out there, God's going to help us through this. Praise God. That day you shall know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. He that have my commandments and keepeth them. We've got to keep the word of God. When I'm able to get in hospitals right now, the only way I get in is if somebody's passing. They'll call me. And the doctor says there's only a little bit of time left in an individual's life. Only God knows, but the doctors have a general idea. But what I want you all to know is this. There will come a day when your pastor will be laid in a hospital bed, a nursing home, and they will go get my family. And they will say, he only has a little bit of time. None of us like to think about that ending time. But how many of us really, really understand that it could happen at any time for us? But to follow God's word is the most important thing you'll ever do. When I got saved, I made a promise to God. God, you forgive me. And God, if you'll be able to let me learn that word, 
and not be scared to get in front of people when he called me to preach. I'll preach till the day of my last breath. God has brought me through many things, many health issues. I could have easily been already gone. But God's been so good to us. But what I want you to do is you're sitting there, things are going good. No one knows when that time's coming. I want to ask you from the bottom of my heart because I love you all. I care about you. I know that many of you have family in heaven waiting on you. I've done so many young people services and so many elderly services and so many aged, middle aged. I, I went into Grady Hospital, held a little baby that had passed because mommy and daddy just couldn't let it go. They called me here at church on my birthday. They said, can you come to the hospital? A couple will not give up their little baby to us. My mother-in-law was working at the time at the hospital. I went in there and I held that little baby. I said, can I hold him? Can I hold him? Most of the beautiful little baby you'd ever want to see. And I told him, you know, you have a grandma, a mom up in heaven already. Yeah. Mama said, yeah, I got, my mom and my grandma's already up there. I said, well, you know, this little one here. I can see your mom and your grandma. I believe with all my heart holding that little one. Till you get up to heaven. There's nine months, full term. The lungs just didn't work. That's why I think I'm so close to children. I want to see them grow, I want to see them happy. I wanted to see them have a good brought up and a good home. But I ask you, are we following God's word? If our Lord would come right now, would we be ready to go home? I believe I'll see that little baby in heaven one day. I'll never forget that young couple Mama was 17 and the daddy was 19. That's why it hurts me so much when I hear someone giving up on a baby. So I saw that couple crying to the point they couldn't, they couldn't see who I even was. That's real love. He that hath my commandments and, hath, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Do you love Jesus? Do you love God? God gave His Son for us on the cross. I can just imagine all the problems, perplexed, distressed, everything finally is going to be over. No more tears, no more crying, no more pain, no more suffering, no more pandemic. It will be done. 
We'll be in heaven for eternity with our God. I'm going to have an altar call right now. God has placed so much on my heart that I wasn't even expecting to preach tonight. I see people distressed. I see families in an uproar. I see people hurt. I see hearts broken. I'm going to ask you. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you must believe upon Him. If you're there right now, say, Lord, I do believe in You. Lord, if there's anything in my life that needs forgiveness, Lord, please forgive me. My goodness. We've all made bad mistakes in life. We've had a Lord that has forgiven us. And then follow His commandments or commit your life to Him. I've always been funny. I've always been. If I think I've hurt somebody, if I think I've done something, if I think anything, I, I'll tell you, anything that I would do to slow up a Christian's life in any way, When I got saved, I followed the commandments. It says you gotta love. You gotta love. If you're out there and you're struggling, Lord, please help them. You sent this message to someone, it may be one person. But someone's struggling badly. In your name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My Tim. 